are here because he has many, many stories about his life. And today he's going to talk to you about the power of saying no. And I think that's one of the things many of us are afraid of doing. How many of you are afraid you let people down or they're not, not going to like you? Well, sure. Whatever it is. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm so excited about hearing how to say no because I'm a Pollyanna. I say yes to everything. That's why they, they tease me about that. So please come on up to Simone. I, I keep saying Simon, Simone, I forget it. Don't worry about what I call him. He is our speaker today. Come on, Simon. Come on up. <laughs> Yay, Simon. Okay, Simon. 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 How far does this mic go? Can I carry it around the room? Um, use the yellow, use the orange one. Got a very long you can travel with it. You can travel with it. Good deal. Reach. I think the orange one is more, as a longer yeah, table. If I gotta switch it up, I'll switch it. Okay. Here, just pull. Just pull just, it out. Just slide it. No, I, I don't need to move it yet. Okay. okay. Cool. Wow. Cool, you sound like God. <laughs> <laughs> really? Because I'm sweating like a sinner in church. <laughs> Thank you. I gave it was thirsty, so I gave it moisture. <laughs> Good self care. Um, before I start, I want to dedicate this talk to uh, one of the gods I worship, Loki, mm -hmm. who has taught me a lot about truth to yourself and others. And I also want to ask that um, this is something that we all do anyway, but just a reminder. I think for this talk specifically, it would help to be very mindful of our egos today and just notice what they're telling us and accept it, but maybe not engage with it just yet today. Um, I'm gonna start with a couple stories, and this is the first one, just so I can mark them off. I was walking in San Francisco, I was on my way to the Asian Art Museum, walking down Market Street, and I see a young woman wearing a red vest that says, save the children, and she's got a tablet. And she's ready. She's ready to snare somebody in and, and convince them to save the children, and that's so great. So I'm walking, and she goes, do you have a minute? And I'm going, oh boy. Oh god, I'm broke. Oh boy. But I want to give her a chance. Maybe I can give her, like, something, right? So I go, sure, I have a minute. And so she launches into it. She gives me the spiel. She's like, we want to save the children, you know, for just a dollar a day. And she shows me the map with all the, you know, countries that have poor children in them. The United States is highlighted, which I'm not surprised about. Um, yeah. So I'm there, and I'm, I'm listening, and I'm like, this is a great mission. Um, and she asks me, you know, for a dollar a day, you can pledge a dollar a day. You can meet the child and meet and do this thing and bond with them and send them letters. And I'm like, whoa. Well, so it's a, it's a monthly business, and she's like, yeah, you pledge, you know, $35 a month. And I said, well, I can't do that, but I can give you something now. And she goes, well, that's not really how it works. And I explained to her, well, um, this isn't really going to work for me. I just, I can't do $35 a month because I can't predict what next month is going to be like. And she was really trying to convince me, and I said, I'm sorry, it's going to have to be a no. And she said, okay. And I look back on that and I think to myself, well, if I had just said no from the outset, she probably would have, in that time, she tried to convince me, find somebody who would have given her a yes. And I really wasted her time. My next story is in the same part of San Francisco on Market Street. I was walking to the train and I spot a, um, a woman in a wheelchair. Um, she's on the ramp and she's not moving on the ramp. And, you know, I make eye contact, and when I make eye contact with people, you know, smile, hi. And she smiles and says, hi, and knows her chair's not moving, so I go, do you need a hand? She goes, no. Actually, can you go into that building and find Jeremy? He'll help me. And I go, oh, where's the building? Where's Jeremy? Was it this way? Is it that way? So I go in, and I ask for Jeremy, and Jeremy comes out, and I said, cool. It sounds simple, but... Um, a lot of the time, people's impulse in that situation is to go up to the chair and start pushing. Now, if I had done that, first of all, we wouldn't have gotten anywhere. It would be really embarrassing because that chair was a power chair and it was stuck. <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, um, had I done that, it really would have really violated her space and she probably would have just told me to buzz off and I wouldn't have actually been able to give her the help she needed. So... I wish this was a talk about how to say no, but 
I, I'm not good at saying no. Um, thanks, Casey. <laughs> I, wish, I wish this was a talk about saying no, but I think it would be hypocritical for me to try to teach y'all how to say no, because I'm still learning it myself. This is more about why no is important, why it's important to say no, and why it's important to hear no. Um, I think one value we all share here is personal autonomy, which means have, keeping charge of your own life and your own body. And because of that, we want to have that, you know, we want to provide that for ourselves and for others. And that's sort of a karma cycle. The more we do that for others, the more we get that for ourselves, especially for the people that we interact with most on a daily basis. And those no's are really important. So when you can confidently hear a no from somebody, it's a very powerful and valuable thing because that means that person can trust you with their no. And if they can trust you with their no, then they can trust you with their yes. And if you can hear a no from somebody, then you can hear a yes. Conversely, if you cannot accept a no, then there's no way you can believe a yes. No is precious because it saves us from reluctant yeses. Reluctant yeses are muddy and not great, and they're difficult, and the person receiving the reluctant yes, even if they're not an intuitive, knows on some level that that person does not want to say yes. And then they're in this position of, well, do I push and ask, are you sure? Do I try something else? But that person's already said yes, what do you do? And then the energy exchange carries on and no one's really satisfied. The reluctant yes pushes away people's true wants and needs. It's a half-hearted, obligatory handing over of energy. A true yes, an honest yes, is a fully intended act of love and service. Generally, when people are asking something, they're going for that yes. Many times people give the reluctant yes because they feel obligated to. Sometimes that reluctant yes comes from a place of fear. I don't want to disappoint this person. I don't want to look like a bad person. I don't want this person to hurt me, especially out in public with a stranger. I don't want this person to hurt me. With our loved ones, it can also be I don't want this person to think that I am unreliable or that I don't love them. From people who are prone to reluctant yeses, no's are that much more fragile and difficult. It's very brave for those people to say no, and sometimes those no's can be very confident. The most confident, most common example of a confident no is no thank you. Sometimes no's can be, not right now, that won't work for me, I don't think so, maybe another time. And sometimes those no's are seen as invitations to press, to insist, to say, please, why not? What about this? What about that? Dottie, can you read my aura right now? Please? <laughs> Ronnie, can you sing me a song right now? Really? But you're so good at singing. I think we all want to hear you sing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that really hurts my feelings. <laughs> he's, he's shrugging at me now. <laughs> I was going to run around for dramatic effect, but I'm not feeling it. <laughs> Sometimes those difficult no's are very hard and harsh sounding and they can hurt our feelings. Sometimes those no's sound like, get away from me, screw off, leave me alone. They're very difficult no's to deliver and hear. But those are the most important no's to hear because a lot of the time those no's come from a place of deep fear and guardedness. Those people have their shields up all the time. And I think those no's are the most important not to insist with. Insistence comes in lots of forms. 
like I just said, the please, but you're so good, sometimes are a little more subtle. Why not? But you might like it. I just wanted to help, though. Mm -hmm. You should be grateful. Oh. <laughs> I'm just trying to solve your problem. Yeah, it's for your own good. It's for your own good. <laughs> that you. one precludes a lot of bad things that's happened in my life from the hands of a lot of bad people. Mm -hmm. No's are loaded. That's why it's hard to give no, and that's why it's hard to hear no. Sometimes no is taken personally, and that's why people insist. You said no to me, does that mean you don't love me? No. Most of the time, a no is about the person giving it, not the person the no is being spoken to. So those difficult no's, they're difficult because those insistences validate why that person is afraid. There are many ways no's can become yeses. A great one is, okay, thanks anyway. What do you need right now? What can I do for you instead? Should I leave you alone? Let me know if you change your mind. And then the topic ends. What? I'll come back later. That might work sometimes. But in order to hear a no, the question has to come. I go back to my story about the woman in the chair who's chair was stuck. If I had gone up and pushed it for her, there's no way she could have opened a door for a yes for me. And there's no way I could have opened a door for a no for her. It would have just been me going right up and getting in her space and assuming something she didn't want. There must be a question. Would you like some help? Could you do this for me? Can I come? Without opening that door, you're essentially barging in on that person's space. There's no energy exchange or an energy take or an energy force. Even people who aren't energetically inclined can feel that. And they can't put into words why they feel violated, why it doesn't feel good. But they look back and they think, I didn't like that. I wish I had said no. I wish I had done this. If only they'd asked me first. A lot of people take for granted when the yes will come. We love to hug here. I like a hug, but not all the time. It could be great to just ask, would you like a hug? With couples, sometimes it's taken for granted that they can kiss whenever they want. It's not always true. This is about to get a little dark. With some couples, everyone's over 18 here, right? Okay, cool. Depends on the day. <laughs> Put your inner child away. <laughs> Please. For some couples, um, it's taken for granted that they can have intimacy whenever they want, and that's not true. And there are many, many debates about, well, they're married, so they should be able to just, you know, do whatever they want whenever they want. No. And there's these, this, this huge, you know, if you're paying attention to this Me Too business, um, for those of you who don't know about Me Too, it's about people coming forward when they were harassed, when they were assaulted, they're saying, people say women, but it's really anyone of any gender. Yeah. And, you know, people are expected to say yes, because, well, if you say no, don't you want the attention? How could you be so ungrateful? Don't you want the job? Don't you want the job? Don't you want to stay at this job? Don't you want that raise? Mm -hmm. You're asking for it. Aren't you asking for it? <laughs> We live in a culture of yes. Yes, I can touch you. 
yes, I can guide you this way. Yes, I can brainwash you like this. Yes, I will buy it. Yes, I will take it. Yes, I will steal it. No is so wonderful. No sets a boundary between yourself and people whose energies you may not want in your life. I love no. I've heard a bit of commentary, so I was wondering if anyone wanted to add to this discussion. Pulling out the mic now. It's not time to drop it yet, so I won't. <laughs> So I think that we've been raised, you know, uh, for me, uh, to be a good girl, you always said yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. You never said no. You, no matter what it meant for you, you wanted to be sweet and loving and you wanted approval. And saying no didn't get approval. So I think there's a, a hopefully, the newer generations are now realizing they are uh, responsible for their thoughts but they're also responsible for their body and who, what they can have happen to it. So I think saying no is something, kids learn it, at, look at little kids at two, one of the first words they say over and over is no. And we, and we keep trying to get them to not say no, but quite often it's for their best interest. Okay, no, it's okay. Oh, it's stuck yeah. in the corner. Yeah, no, it's okay. Thank you, Norbert. Um, just one thing to keep in mind. Also, one of the things that some kids learn is in abusive situations, you don't say no. Right. And grown up, we're all grown up now, it's a matter of relearning how to say no, how to set the boundaries, how to redo things. I think that's important. And I like your question. Thanks. Yeah, especially for people who have, who've had those pasts, it's very difficult to say no. Mm -hmm. No meant, well, no dinner, a beating, yeah. a whole lecture about how you're so bad. Anybody else? Very good. <laughs> Has everyone else, though? What? Wait, what? <laughs> you said you something, so I'm giving you the microphone now. Oh, Jeff. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Oh shit, it doesn't reach. <laughs> <laughs> Energy has said no. <laughs> You're gonna get it one way or another. Oh. <laughs> Just kidding. Do you really not want to speak? I don't know. That's the end. Yeah, but that's the end of it. Do you want to weigh it? Um, I don't really have anything to say that's not gonna sound like a big old hedgehog. So, <laughs> sound like a hedgehog. We don't care. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> they sound like little coffee makers. Yes, they do. They're so cute. <laughs> okay, I won't force you if you don't want to. Actually, here. Okay. So now that I've talked about hedgehogs, the reason why I really relate with hedgehogs is their no is undeniable. Um, if they don't want to be touched, if they don't want to be pet, if they don't want to be messed with in any way, they will let you know in a very, very um, certain way. Um, and I think that that's honestly part of my spiritual, um, professional, um, self-actualization journey is finding my no. And it took me a very, very long time to find my no. And, um, unfortunately, my no, um, sometimes has to be very, very firm and definite or else I will get... Um, lots and lots of responses that are unproductive and that I don't want. And um, I tend to bond best with those who can relate to similar experiences. And I think that's all I really have to say. So basically hedgehogs. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody else? Simon, I oh, do. Oh, I'll come over because the mic's not going to Sure. <clears throat> so one of the places that I get really rattled with a no is um, when my adult children ask me things that 
they're, you know, my rule has been when they were teenagers, to love you is to not do for you what you can do for yourself. And that worked pretty good when they were teenagers, but now they're showing up as like, you know, I've had a hard day, mom, could you make me dinner? And, and to say no, there's this whole dialogue in the back of my head. I mean, I really am saying no, because it's like, I'm not, I'm not, the kitchen's not open, you can do what you want, but I'm not doing it. But there's a whole conversation that happens in my head about how it activates me thinking I'm not a good mom, or I'm not a good person, because there's a part of me that wants to do kind things for them. But there's a whole other part of me that goes, I've got, a, I've got other things to do. I've got plans, I've got a, you know, or I'm tired, you know, whatever it is. But just that internal dialogue that, that it doesn't interfere with me saying no, but it's, there's this uncomfortable place yeah. that I have yeah. to sit with after I've said no. Yeah. yeah, the consequences of saying no. Yeah. Consequences can be hard. Yes, it can. I'm not saying that no is one always wonderful and innocent and perfect sometimes no is cruel um well, i'm not being cruel oh no <laughs> not no you. okay no way no. that's boundary setting you are not you are not chef april girl um, i haven't heard about the bodies in the basement yet so. <laughs> the bodies in the basement with the bodies at the floor <laughs> um what the point i wanted to make today is that um no can be loving. It can help that other person know when your yes is true and meaningful. It can spare that other person the guilt of, well, does this person really want to do this for me? Does this person really want my help? Does this person really want me to come? Does this person really want me to make them really want to make me dinner? And then, you know, the reluctant dinner, then the food is, you know, not made with love and doesn't taste good, and then it defeats the whole purpose of asking for dinner. There you go. Hopefully, no yeah. Is, is boundary setting. Yes. Yeah. And, 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 and no is boundary setting. And, and boundaries are difficult for, for so many people. Um, when I was married, I was punished for saying no. Um, that's why I was only married two years. Um, <laughs> and, you know, because it, boundaries have never been easy for me. Um, as Dottie said, I wanted to always be accepted. I was the child that, you know, that I wanted everybody to love me. And I had been called stupid in my lifetime for wanting people to love me. Boy, that's stupid. Why do you do that? You do that because you want to be loved? You know, can't, and, and I, what they were really trying to say was, we love you just the way you are. And I didn't know that at the time. But throughout the years, what I realized was, you know, if you love me enough, you honor me enough, and you'll honor my boundaries as well. So I just want to close with that. Um, a lot of people might see boundaries as, this is working, there we go. How, how does technology work? Um, a lot of people see boundaries as, you know, they're, oh, you're so mean, oh, you're so this, oh, you know, you should be this, you should be that. It's, it's an act of love for everybody involved to say no when you need to say no. Oh, David, hi. A lot of people make the mistake of thinking that a person is very rigid when they say no, and that's not the case. So David said a lot of people make the mistake of thinking that a person is very rigid when they say no, and that's not the case. True. So ask the question, hear the question, say no when you mean it. Say yes when you mean it, and be firm. And be mindful for those many shades of no that can be very difficult to deliver. Thanks. Thank you. I was so impressed you got all that off of that little phone. <laughs> wow. Oh, my water's up there. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Here it is. I need that. Okay.